Welcome to the Long Box Paradox, episode 54. I'm Dan, and uh, we are part of the Comic Chop News Network, uh, which basically is me, but just to stop brand confusion that might be there. Um, anyway, got a couple of little reviews to do today, just uh, three I picked. Uh, there was one issue that I wanted to review, but I haven't been able to get my hands on. That was Philadelphia number two, so I am waiting on that right now. So we're going to start out right away from DC Comics. Joker and Harley, Criminal Sanity Number 2 by Cami Garcia, Mike Mayhew, and Miko Suyen. Uh, first thing I will say off the top, this has been an interesting take on the Joker and Harley, where Harley now is an investigator, um, kind of like a profiler, and starts out with a murder where Basically, a body was taken apart and re-sewed back together. They were calling it like the Vitruvian Man murders. Um, it was almost straight out of Seven, where like they basically took the body fat of the person and melted it out of it. Um, interesting crime scene. Um, it will jump back and forth between Miko Suyen's art and Mike Mayhew. Uh, the Mike Mayhew ones are the ones that are all in color and rather jarring. Uh, we have an appearance by a Dr. Crane, who looks just like um, Killian Murphy from Batman Begins. Uh, we have Victor Zaz in there. And then as we have flashbacks of by Mike Mayhew that are all in color. And oddly, uh, it's about a child who is pretty much abused by his father, who is a gangster. And he's you know wearing a scary clown mask. And you kind of follow him through his childhood and even more as an adult. And they jump forward a little bit and we see an older Joker. Well, not even, I would say he's maybe his 20s. Wearing leather, it's more um, Heath Ledger-ish. Um, and I'd have to believe that this is the abused kid, just a little bit older with the time jumps. Um, we also get a little bit into Harley's uh, flashback where... Her mom basically saw her with red lipstick on and then, you know, starts, you know, throwing bottles at her and scrubbing it off of her. Uh, I guess trying to show that they're two damaged individuals. Uh, I mean, of course, they're going to end up finding each other. Um, again, the, this Joker is very Heath Ledger-ish. Like, he goes to meet some about some hardware he wants and then, you know, stabs him in the arm, takes a woman, kidnap kidnaps her and they show her in the chair with her mouth taped and we cut the black a uh, pretty good issue i i really enjoyed it um i'm gonna go with like a seven out of ten uh the it is a little bit jarring when you jump from miko suyan to mike mayhew's art um different art styles completely and then going from like a black and white to a color uh, i really actually enjoyed this this is a solid second issue um Good on DC with the Black Label putting out a book like Harleen and then now this where it goes a little off the grid a little bit. Um, this new take with Harley being a criminal uh, psychological profiler I find interesting and um, enjoyable. And uh, it's a buy for me, 100% buy. Uh, get issue one, uh, beautifully drawn, uh, written well by Cami Garcia. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't. Uh, they're going to Marvel Comics now. And it uh, feels weird that after the uh, end of the Skywalker saga and Rise of Skywalker, we get a new Star Wars comic focusing on Skywalker. And it's by Charles Soule and uh, Jesus or Jesus Saiz. Um, this takes place immediately after Empire Strikes Back comes out. Um, and it's an interesting take on it because it's Luke basically dealing with failure. He's, you know, still got the thing on his arm after his hand being cut off. And he keeps basically daydreaming of the incident over and over with his hand being cut off. While Lando, Leia, and then Chewie are all arguing about what to do about Han. Uh, like I said, it's like immediately after that. And... Uh, we show the rebell rebellion getting picked off in different places. I, again, um, this is a different take on um, a Star Wars book because a lot of it was about self-doubt and 
um, a very kind of damaged Luke in it where he has just incredible bouts of doubt creeping into his head and you know is there a point where he's like I don't know if I can be a Jedi um very well written by Charles Soule uh uh, it's a different spin on it because they've always done such a cocksure Luke Skywalker and all these. So um, I enjoyed this weird different take on it. And it's something that they never really wrote about or even touched on much in any of the movies or books, really. At least I felt like his failure with Vader and on Bespin. Uh, and I, I liked it. Uh, it was a strong first issue, in my opinion. Uh, it's seven and a half out of ten. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it, it was just different, and I like that. I, I definitely like that a lot. Um, then we're going to go to a book that, from the cover, I was unsure if I was going to like, and that would be Donny Cates' Thor with Nick Klein. Um, and this is one of those things where I think I doubted the book because I did not like the cover. The cover kind of made me not want to read it just because what they showed is Thor's new outfit without explaining it um, made me go oh god what are what are we doing here I, I like Donny Cates writing but I was just like Nick Klein might be killing me here uh, we, what I will say though you get to the interiors and it's some big broad writing and the art kind of matches so um I tried to judge a book by its cover and I was wrong. And the first couple of pages are Mjolnir chasing through, like just charging through different dimensions um, with the lightning going, arcing around it and actually like a rainbow trail on it. And it goes to where the Avengers are and it blows the head off of this creature the Avengers are fighting and then crashes into the ground. And... They see that Thor's hammer and Tony Stark's like, anybody got a Sharpie? So Thor calls the hammer back and he writes, uh, Tony Stark had written, nice shot, enjoy your retirement. And we see a Thor who is not happy with his place. He, he's not happy being king. He's getting restless. He didn't get what he wanted or it's not what he wanted it to be. And he's not enjoying ruling. Like, he kicks everybody out. Then Loki comes in, unbidden. Thor gets up, and he's kind of grunting, lifting the hammer. And Loki notices it, um, almost like weakness. And as Thor is walking away, Galactus crashes into the courtyard of Asgard. And he ends up summoning all of the heralds that are there to talk about what this black... Uh, Oh, crap, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, the Great Black Winter. And as Norrin Rad comes in, he talks about the Black Winter or Black Blightstorm, the Rot Blizzard. It has many names. It's what killed Galactus's old universe. And they say basically to fight it, they need Galactus to be strong. And the whole time the Silver Surfer found these super planets that could have overpowered Galactus... And he managed to hide them from him. But to be able to fight this, they're going to have to basically overpower him. And, like, they have Nova, like, oh, God, Galactus with more power. Ugh. And the other half was like, which one of us is taking him? Cosmic Ghost Rider's there. Um, Thor is going to go on this quest with them. And Galactus is missing an arm. And Thor asks him to kneel. Um... Galactus basically says when he saw the blizzard, you could everybody perceives it differently. And in the Black Winter, you see your own true death. And Galactus saw this time as Galactus that Thor was his death. So he uses his hand and starts blasting him. And he turns Thor into the Herald of Thunder, which brings us to that new costume. And the issue ends. This was actually a rather exciting issue. Um, I enjoyed how it was being told. Um, it was very broad. Um, never felt bored reading it either. Um, and it's always what I kind of imagined King Conan was going to be if they ever did it with... I, I guess they showed the end of Conan Destroyer where Conan gets on the throne and he's miserable. 
he, he's led this life of excitement, and there he is just sitting there with his sword, just bored. And uh, I'm, at, I'm guessing this is kind of where Thor is coming from this, where he's always had this life of adventure, and now he's stuck on this throne. Uh, 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, this is weirdly one of those weeks where everything I picked was like a 7 or an 8. Um, I have not gotten X-Men number 4 yet. Uh, I just want to pick some of these newer titles. And uh, I was actually really excited to read Joker and Harley. Uh, Philadelphia number 2, though, um, I'll probably end up posting a review on my Instagram. Just a real quick one. I uh, really, really looking forward to that because uh, if you haven't picked up issue 1, it did something with the vampire genre where it put a twist on it. Um, even though I say it's a little close to Guillermo del Toro's The Strain, the way it's tying into colonial history, I, I find fantastic. Um, so with that being said, uh, a really quick review today. Um, hope everybody's having a great New Year's. Uh, hopefully not fighting off too big of a hangover. Uh, it's a new year. Let's everybody just keep moving forward. Uh, thank you for joining me. Have fun. Take care. Have a great Wednesday. And get ready for next Wednesday. It's going to be another packed week. Bye.